Out of these two images, which one would you say is uh, Christ? It's what? Jesus. This one here, right? Would you say the same thing he said, that this image right here is beautiful? You say, yeah, right? So the problem in our community, and why we say this right here is beautiful, is because we're conditioned to hate ourselves. That's why. I'm going to show you in the Bible. Hold on, sister. I'm going to show you in the Bible. Give me five minutes. I'm going to show you in the Bible that this image right here, which you say is not a beautiful image, I'm going to show you this image right here is actually recorded in the Bible. You would never see this image in the Bible, ever. small things that God told us not to do. Thou should not kill. Thou should not be stealing. Thou should not uh, be lying and bear false witness to one another. These are part of the Ten Commandments that we say, oh, this is what I keep. But God is talking to you, you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. What are you going to do? What are you going to do to change your life? This is why we are here. How can we change the situations in the community uh, and, and how can we get out of this condition? We have to come back to the laws. We have to come back to God. Read. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. And blood touches blood. How many times in Chicago we look up and we got 10 deaths on a, during, during one day or during overnight? How many times we sit there we look at drive-by shootings? Huh? Is this not going on in Chicago? Blood touching blood. We got problems with one another. We can't go to our brothers and talk. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Read it again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother. You hear that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? God said don't hate your brother in your heart. How are you hating your brother in your heart? How is it? What's going on? How do you hate your brother? How do you hate your brother? God said, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So how, hating your brother is allowing your brother to sin. It's allowing, it's being accepted. When you see a boyfriend and girlfriend, God didn't ordain that. When you see everybody out here doing their own thing, shopping on the Sabbath, God did not ordain that. This is how you hate your brother when you see him going off and you're you afraid to correct him. The reasons the way we got uh, killers going on in Chicago is because we have, have abandoned God's laws. We have to come back to him. Read what you got. No, I'm not, but okay. Verse 18, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Right there it says the children of thy people. That's your own people. That ain't talking about everybody. We have a job we have to do. When are you gonna come back and keep God's law, statutes, and commandments? When are we gonna take the initiative and the charge? When are we going to do that? When are we going to come back and keep the laws, statutes, and commandments? God is looking for you, you so-called blacks. Read the book of Psalms, chapter 94 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? God is saying, who's going to stand up for his laws? Who's going to come back to him? I know everybody say we love God. Everybody say, you know, hey man, I go to church. But God is asking a direct and specific question to you. Read that again. Who will rise up for me? God is asking a question. He's asking a question to you. Everybody that's sitting in your car under the sound of my voice. God is asking you a question. He said, who is going to rise up? Who? Who is it going to be? Who is going to be uh, man enough to come back and stand and say, I'm going to do what you say, Lord? We all say we go to church. 
God is asking you a question. Read that again. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Uh -huh. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? God is saying, who is going to stand up for him? Hey, brother, if you, hey, y'all got some time? Hey, come on. Come on across the street. I know y'all got time for the Lord. So God is asking a question. We going to see who's going to stand up for God. Today is the Lord's Sabbath day. Why do we have so many businesses open for you to buy and sell? Why are there so many businesses open and have sales going on today? Today is the Lord's Sabbath day. We are not supposed to be working. We are not supposed to be buying. We are not supposed to be selling, cooking today. Who's going to stand up for the Lord? And we can prove all things through the Bible. Read what you got. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day. Say it again. Remember the Sabbath day. God said, remember the Sabbath day. Why did he say remember? Can anybody ask me that question? Why did the Lord say remember the Sabbath day? He said remember because we're going to be, we're going to forget. We got all these different religions that's convinced us that the Sabbath is on Sunday. But God said, remember the Sabbath. We're going to write us explaining and break it down. Read. Remember the Sabbath day uh -huh. to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. But the seventh you're supposed to keep holy. You're supposed to not do any work. Read. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So anybody that's in, under your household, your roof. Back then we had land, so we had people working for us. God said, everybody that's, doing, uh, that's, that's in your gate should not be working as well because it's the Sabbath. So all these businesses should be closed. If you want to cripple the economy, if you want to take back charge, stop buying and selling on one day. That's all God's asking you. He's not asking for a whole lot. Read what you got. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10 and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. Or, and if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the so let's make it let's make it plain. If Chipotle, if T-Mobile, if Jewel, if Food for Less, Dollar Tree, Marshalls, McDonald's, the gas stations, read. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, uh -huh. that we would not buy it of them. So God said, look, if the land bring things for you to profane or disrespect the Sabbath. God said, we will not do it. We're not going to do it. We're going to keep this day holy to the best of our ability. Read that again. And if the people of the land bring wear or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day, and that we would leave the seventh year and the exaltation of every debt. So we have a job to do in coming back to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Remember, God said, who's going to stand up? Who's going to rise up for me? God is asking you a direct question. Part of that, and keeping what he said, is not buying and selling on the Sabbath to keep it holy. We got a lot of people going up and down, to and fro. But who's going to be out here buying and selling? I know you got a Wendy's over here. Hey, you got a question, brother? No? Which one of these two signs right here? When you look at these two signs, which one would you say is Christ? This one right here, right? Why would you say that? You said, look at him. You said, what? He's beautiful. You say, this right here is beautiful. Why would you say that? Say that again? He's our Lord and Savior. Who told you this image was beautiful? You did, right? Sisters, what are we talking about? I got a question for y'all. Out of these two images, which one would you say is uh, Christ? His what? Jesus. This one here, right? Would you say the same thing he said, that this image right here is beautiful? 
You say, yeah, right? So the problem in our community, and why we say this right here is beautiful, is because we're conditioned to hate ourselves. That's why. I'm going to show you in the Bible. Hold on, sister. I'm going to show you in the Bible. Give me five minutes. I'm going to show you in the Bible that this image right here, what you say is not a beautiful image, I'm going to show you this image right here is actually recorded in the Bible. You would never see this image in the Bible, ever. And I'm going to show you that. Give me Revelation. One and one. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the revelation of Jesus Christ is actually talking about the revealing. We're getting ready to reveal who Jesus Christ actually is. It's recorded in the Bible who Jesus is. Hold that. Give me uh, John 7, 38. Because I want you to actually, don't believe me, but believe what Christ actually said. Okay? So, we about to show you in scripture that this right here is a false image. This right here is not Jesus. We getting ready to show you that. Read. John chapter 7 and verse 38. Uh -huh. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So, Christ said out of his own mouth, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said. You hear that? As the scripture has said. So we're getting ready to go into the Bible and show you the color, the actual color of Christ. All right? Read. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh -huh. His head. Jump, jump down to verse 10. Verse 10. Uh -huh. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day uh -huh. and heard behind me a great voice uh -huh. as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega. So to paint the whole picture. John, who was writing this, right? He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. This is the Sabbath. He said, and I heard a voice behind me. Read. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, uh -huh. the first and the last. Uh -huh. And what thou seest, write in a book. So, if I'm turning, if I got my back towards you and you're speaking, what, are, what am I going to do? If I got my back towards you and you're speaking to me, what is the next thing that I'm going to do? Okay, turn around. Let me show you. What's your name, brother? Ron. Ron? All right. So I'm going to say, hey, Ron, you're going to turn, right? That's going to be your first reaction. John is doing the same thing, right? So Christ is speaking to John. So what is John getting ready to do? He's going to turn around. Read. What thou seest, write in a book. So he says, what you see, I want you to jot it down. Put it in a book, right? Read. And send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto La Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. So he says, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me. So if you turn nine times, or ten times out of ten, unless you have a condition, if you turn to them, you're going to be able to see them and look at them face to face, right? So this is what John is doing. Remember, he called him. He called John. John turned around. So now John is getting ready to write the description of what he's seen. Read. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Uh -huh. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So he says, I turned and I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst, one that appears to look like the Son of Man. Read. Cold, with a garment down to the foot. Uh -huh and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. So now he's describing the clothes that he had on, read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So he said his hairs, now he's describing what he sees. So he's being very detailed. He said his hairs and his head was white like wool. So what type of, what texture of hair does black people have? Is it black? What texture? What texture? Is it what kind of texture? Is it stringy? Is it thick? Is it woolly? You say it's stringy. So black people have stringy hair. Touch your head. What is that? It's thick, right? It's wool. That's that's what he's describing. So John is writing this stuff down. He's saying his head and his hairs were white like wool. So he's writing down the whole description. He's saying white like wool. So who has woolly hair? This one, right? So does this one have woolly hair? So this 
already looks like a, a false image, right? Based off of what we're reading in the Bible. Read. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So it says that his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. Because I know you're pretty young, so you don't, you don't drink alcohol. But I'm going to prove to you in the scriptures that, uh, that Christ actually sp uh, drank wine in moderation. And that's why his eyes is red. What's, what's going on, brother? What's your name? Anthony? What's your name, miss? Okay, okay, cool. So what we're speaking on right now, we're actually describing who Christ is according to the Bible. This young man right here, Ryan, he said that Christ looks like this. Would y'all agree? Would you agree that this right here looks like Christ? Jesus was a black man. The young man said this right here is a beautiful image. He said this right here was Jesus. So what we're doing we're going in the Bible and we're proving that this right here is a false image. Right. This right here is what you see a lot in, in a lot of churches. Right. This image right here is what a lot of our parents and grandparents and things of that nature have posted on their wall. Because this is the image that they pray to. This right here is a false God. This right here is never recorded in the Bible. But I'm getting ready to show you that this image here, this black image, this image that looked like all of us, is actually the, Messi the, the, the Messiah, the Savior. Start right from the top, 14. Verse 14, his head and his hair were white like wool. So he says his hairs and his hair were white like wool. So when you touch the, your hair, you have a woolly textured hair. All black people have woolly textured hair, read. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So it says his eyes as a flame of fire. That's what we was getting ready to tell the young man and show him in the scriptures why it says his eyes was a flame of fire. Give me Genesis 49. The book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. Y'all hear that? So speaking about Christ, it says his eyes shall be red with wine, meaning Christ is going to drink wine, but in moderation. A lot of times when we drink, the, the whites of our eyes turn red. All right? So, what we're talking about right now, we're talking about the image of Christ, okay? When you look at this image right here, you see this image a lot, don't you? What, who would you say this is? You, you say this is what? Jesus, right? So we're proving that this image right here is not in the Bible. You would never be able to find this image right here in the Bible and say that it's Jesus, okay? I want you to understand that. We're reading this right now, okay? Read Revelation 1.14 again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it says his hair and his hair was white like wool. Hold on, sis. Don't go, don't go too far. Read. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet. So it says, and his feet. And his feet. So John is actually writing these things down. And he said, and his feet. Read. Like unto fine brass. As if they burn in a furnace. So Christ's feet was like fine brasses if they burn in a furnace. So if you have, uh, what is it? Matter of fact, I'm gonna ask y'all a question. What's the color of brass? Brown. 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 Like brown, like a color of a pity, like copper, right? Uh -huh. So if you burn it, what's the color that's gonna come out? It's, it's gonna get darker, right? So how did this image right here come out lighter? Where did this come from? That is correct. This is a false image. So this right here, this is the image of Christ. With this image comes laws, statutes, and commandments. It's rules. Okay? This right here, we have to be, uh, comes discipline. This here gives you uh, a feeling you can do whatever you want to do. This one here gives you a rule book that you have to follow. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is